What's happening guys? Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So tonight we're going to take a look at the September 13th edition of Impact. A good show, top to bottom. Uh, we built another match for Bound for Glory. And we had a main event that I didn't ever expect to happen. Especially for the world title. So we open the show with Austin Aries, Killer Cross, and Moose coming out. Have a nice couch set up in the ring along with a table. They make themselves at home. Aries grabs the microphone. He starts running down Austin, uh, Austin Aries, Johnny Impact, and Eddie Edwards. Uh, and then they are interrupted by KM and Fala Ba. Now, I don't know about you guys, but this came out of nowhere. I loved it. Um... Aries starts making fun of Fala Ba's weight. Obviously an easy way to get heel heat right now. Um, he tries to offer him a banana, then goes on a tirade about not being able to fat shame in 2018. So, you know, he's really pushing the envelope here. He wants to make sure these people are booing him. Uh, and then KM grabs the mic and talks about them having confidence now, thanks to Sp Scarlet. He runs down Austin Aries. Then he runs down Moose. And this is when the douche chants start because, you know, this, I, I kind of thought this segment had happened before the segment last week because the douche chance kind of came out of nowhere, but this kind of gave them a reason to uh, for the crowd to start chanting them anyway. But anyway, it was funny. Cross and Moose stare down KM and follow Ba. Aries kind of breaks up and says, you know what, I'm... I'm I'm feeling generous. I'm going to give you guys a peace offering. So he offers Falaba a chance at the Impact World title in the main event on the show. Falaba accepts, and we have our main event made for the evening. So we get to our first match of the night, and we have Phoenix and Pentagon versus the Cult of Lee. Um, solid match. Cult of Lee had a good showing here. Uh, we had a near fall when they had a... Uh, Double Stomp Doomsday Device, which was crazy. Uh, Trevor Lee was on the top rope, and Phoenix was on Caleb Conley's shoulders. That got them a near fall, but eventually the Lucha Brothers are able to put away Trevor Lee after hitting a spike package pile driver. Like I said, a good showing for Colt Lee. We haven't seen too, too much from them as far as them looking good. Um, and then after the match, OVE came on the Tron, they challenge Pentagon, Phoenix, and Cage at Bound for Glory. So a lot of people seemed unhappy with the fact that this match was made um, because much like the tag team titles, they will not uh, the X Division Championship will not be defended at Bound for Glory. Um, so, I, I mean, I get people's frustration because now it's a second title that's not being defended. However... I, I don't think they've really built up a successful number one contender for that title. I mean, you have Matt Seidel and Rich Swan kind of having a program there, which I think they should have a back and you know back and forth throughout the Mexico tapings, and then we get that match at Bound for Glory, maybe even a number one contendership with Rich Swan moving on and possibly facing Brian Cage later on in the year. I think that would be a good good thing to do. I mean, it's just kind of like the tag team titles uh, that they've been wrapped up in the whole LAX OGs feud. But again, they really haven't built any tag team up to take those titles off LAX or even challenge for them. So it's another one of those weird spots. I mean, they're kind of having that problem with the, the uh, knockouts title as well. I mean... We've gotten, you know, the big matches. We've gotten Ali versus Tessa. We had Tessa versus Sue Young. Uh, a lot of people, myself included, speculated about Taya possibly uh, having a match with Tessa at Bound for Glory. Uh, I don't think Taya was even at the Mexico tapings for the first night, which took place last night. I believe she was at Bar Wrestling. Um, so she still may be able to make it tonight. Or they may just do promos backstage and hype up a match. Who knows? Um, but yeah. The first set of, or night of tapings took place last night. Um, the crowd looked good. Uh, I did not see any spoilers come up, which is very nice to see. But, uh, yeah. So, I mean, unless any of these guys drop the titles, you know, LAX or Brian Cage. I don't see Brian Cage dropping the title between now and Bound for Glory. But otherwise, it doesn't look like we are going to see an X Division title match or a tag team title match, which... As much as I like to see title matches, I mean, just like WWE is doing, um, with leaving titles off pay-per-views, and it's kind of mind-boggling, but 
they really haven't built anybody up to face these tight or fate challenge for these titles so i'm okay with it but we'll see as we move progress toward bound for glory maybe they'll do something crazy and have uh cage's x division title up in the match where whoever gains the pinfall is the new x division championship uh, x division champion because that way you could uh have a good program afterward maybe with sammy callahan even pentagon and brian cage so we'll see just some speculation uh and then we go backstage and km is excited about follow Ba's title match however follow Ba doesn't seem so sure about this km tells follow Ba to believe in himself and km says we need some advice from former champions so i was like oh man i hope they find eli drake and then we go to commercial and come back sure enough km is looking for eli drake backstage eventually finds him asks him advice for Falaba about the title match and uh Eli's kind of like what so he he says at this point he you know he points to Falaba he's like I want to make that face the face of the company and Eli says well I was gonna go out there and have a dummy accept an open challenge but I see Austin Aries already beat me to it um but then he talks about him having open challenges on the Mexico tapings which leads me to believe that that's what's going to happen at Bound for Glory maybe give us a returning star or a debuting star so that that should be interesting but again we still have tapings to go so we will see if that holds up so at this point he looks up and down followed by and kind of says you know what you should probably get a cup you know what maybe a bowl and then uh km is not happy with that advice given but we keep picking this up throughout the night it, it was good stuff and uh, it led to a good main event so we get the GWN flashback where uh, Kevin Von Erich was at Slammiversary. What a crowd reaction he got when he jumped the guardrail and got in the ring. Just crazy. Then we get uh, an Alicia interview, and she's interviewing Allie and Kiara Hogan. Uh, Allie says she is still focused on preventing Sue Young from doing what she did to herself, Madison Rain, and Rosemary. And that is the reason that she saved Tessa last week. We go to commercial, we come back, and Alicia is interviewing Tessa. Tessa tells, oh, well, I think Alicia said, oh, what about Allie saving you last night? And obviously Tessa took offense to that and said, I didn't need Allie's help last night. And she still sees through Allie's act that she is not the virtuous person that she claims to be. Then we have Katarina versus Alicia Edwards. So I guess the bell rang. I didn't hear it, but they're in the ring. All of a sudden, Grado and Joe Hendry come out. Um, Don says that the idiot mobile has arrived as soon as Grado's music played. I got to laugh, which again, earlier on, Don was asking Josh Matthews if he was going to be calling the uh, Night of the Dummies one night only, which premieres tonight on the GWN. And he said, of course. And Don Callis just said, of course, you're you're uh, calling that show Night of the Dummies, you know, good stuff. It was funny. Um, but yeah, so. Uh, Grado had an interesting attire choice as well. Uh, but Joe says that he reacted wrong last week and he made a video for Katarina and it is called Access Denied. Another classic video by Joe Hendry. At this point, obviously, Katarina is, ha or, you know, her attention is focused on them. Alicia rolls her up and gains the victory. And I, I, like I said, I didn't even hear the bell ring in the beginning, but I guess it did ring. Maybe it didn't. I don't know. But that happened, and that whole match happened because it wanted to further this whole thing with Joe, Grado, and Katarina. So we go backstage, and Falaba walks up to KM, and he's holding a cup in one hand and a bowl in the other. I gotta laugh at that. Uh, KM tells him that Eli was just messing with him. At this point, Scarlett shows up. And she says she is proud of them. She gives him, uh, I think she whispered uh, into K uh, Falaba's ear some words of encouragement. Uh, the only gripe I had with this is it seemed like the music that they played when Scarlett came over, the whole smoke show music, was at the same level as them speaking, so it was kind of hard to uh, to hear it. I mean, maybe it was just my TV, but that was that. Another, uh, I, I love how the whole dynamic between Scarlett and KM and Falaba, so the good stuff there. Then we get a interview where Josh Matthews conducted with Johnny Impact, like a FaceTime thing, a Skype call. Uh, but, you know, this is all about the events that happened last week. He says that his neck and arm are hurt, but he will be at Bound for Glory. And then he says that Aries is surrounding himself with Moose and Cross because he is insecure. So, there was that. Uh, then we have LAX versus 
The Fraternity, which was Trent Gibson and Channing Deckert. Um, this wasn't a terrible match. The the frat had some good offense in, some interesting moves. Uh, Deckert did hit a cutter on Ortiz on the ramp, and I think the uh, Gibson had Santana set up in the ring. Decker was running down the ramp, but he got nailed by Ortiz. And eventually, LAX puts him away with the street sweeper. This whole match was to bring King out. Him and the OGs come out. They are trying to get Conan and LAX to break the ceasefire. King even said something along the lines of that uh, he regrets not finishing the job with Richie and that he was no longer breathing. And it, it was just, you know, one of those things to continue to push it. But that was that. So then we go backstage, and Alicia is interviewing Austin Aries. Uh, she wants to know Austin Aries' motivation behind giving Falaba a title match. Uh, he says the perception of him is that he is a miserable person, but here he's happy. He says he's giving people gifts like Santa Claus. And he says Falaba will suffer the fa same fate as Eddie Edwards and Johnny Impact. And there may not even be a bound for glory because they're going to run through the entire roster. So we go backstage, or we're still backstage, and we run into Falaba, and he has his confidence. So he meets up with Rich Swan. Swan hypes him up. Then Swan bumps into Matt Seidel. Seidel tells Swan that he can't help himself. So how is he going to help Falaba? Uh, and then Swan kind of sends a challenge to him for the Mexico tapings. Um, we will see what happens there. Then we get the announcement that the Impact Hall of Fame induction will take place at Bound for Glory weekend, and we will find out next week who is going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. A uh, couple of guesses, just maybe Abyss could be one of them, maybe America's Most Wanted. I don't know. Uh, somebody said uh, Christian Cage. That would be cool, but don't know, don't know about that. But that should be interesting, and that's cool that they're going to bring it back. Then we have Congo Kong versus Brian Cage. No Jimmy Jacobs at ringside. I think they played up the whole thing that took place a couple weeks back. Um, but, you know, this was a solid match. I think their first match was better, but still, this is the first we've seen of Congo Kong in a little while, um, in a match at least, because I think the match that he interfered was Jimmy Jacobs versus Johnny Impact, so he wasn't involved in that one. I think the last match we might have seen him in was versus Brian Cage. Uh, but we saw a cool spot. Uh, Congo Kong ran down the ramp and hit a crossbody over the top rope onto Brian Cage in the ring. Uh, Cage hit a sit-out powerbomb for a near fall. K uh, Falaba, Falaba. Congo Kong, I might have said Falaba throughout the whole thing. Congo Kong went to set up a choke slam on Brian Cage, and he countered it, hitting a backflip, and then eventually putting away Congo Kong with the F5. So that was that. And then, again... This was just to bring Brian Cage on the microphone after the match, accepting OVE's challenge for Bound for Glory. So, like, every match kind of makes sense. Like, it's just randomly put together, but it has a reason for happening. So, you know, you don't just get these guys out in the ring for no reason and have them accept a match or something to that extent. Uh, what else we got? Then we go backstage and follow by is getting some encouragement from the rest of the locker room as he's making his way out to the ring this was a good segment like i said all this stuff was pretty good throughout the night um i, I love like i said that they're sticking with the hot hand with km and follow bob they are crowd favorites and they're they're getting a good reaction so why not that brings us to the main event of austin aries defending the world championship against follow bob so of course we have killer cross and moose sitting on folding chairs at ringside and km at the other side so aries obviously not taking falaba as a competent competitor starts messing around with him makes him run the ropes he runs aries drops he they do this back and forth until falaba is winded uh we do see falaba get some confidence he ends up chopping the hell out of austin aries he's i think he hit a was a belly to belly suplex and near fall then he sets up for the steamroller and as he's doing the steamroller aries rolls with him and then puts him into the last chancery this was absolutely brilliant i loved this spot um i think aries and ba were up in the corner or yes yeah yeah, yeah. and austin aries hits a sunset flip power bomb and 
throws the last chancery on Falaba and puts him away. So, like I said, it was a fun main event. They built it up like you thought that Falaba had a chance to win. Uh, then, of course, they do what they've been doing the last three weeks. They beat down Falaba and KM. And then they take out KM the same way they took out Johnny Impact and Eddie Edwards. And that is the show. So, again, this was... This is a good show, enjoyable. Um, pretty much every segment had a reason to happen, which is very nice to see. Uh, but we still have a handful of matches still to be decided for Bound for Glory and some key people as well. We don't know what Eli Drake's going to do. We don't know what the Knockouts champion is going to do. I would assume we will see some form of Killer Cross and Moose versus Eddie Edwards and a mystery opponent, um, or they're going to break it off into singles matches, maybe... Eddie Edwards will face Moose. They have history there. That match would make sense. Uh, I'm sure we'll get probably Matt Seidel versus Rich Swan at some point. If it doesn't take place at the Mexico tapings, it's going to take place at Bound for Glory. I could see them doing something where Matt Seidel tries to help Rich Swan and they team or something like that. But we'll see. And Bound for Glory seems to be shaping up to be a good card. Um, hopefully the viewership was good this week. It seemed like a lot of people were talking about it on on the Twitter machine, and, you know, that's that's pretty much it. Don't have much else to talk about. Um, so, yeah, hope you enjoyed the show. Hope you enjoyed my video, and I will see you guys Sunday for another edition of the Impact Report. And until then, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.